Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's MarkWithGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on. That is really, really a wonderful, wonderful cup of coffee. Yeah, here it is from Black Rifle Coffee Company. Silencer Smooth. <laughs> this is really wonderful. It is a light roast, so it's a nice change of pace. I uh, really, really do like it. This light roast is perfect for the quiet professional. The precise roasting specifications bring out its sweet aroma, citrus notes, and a crisp finish. Absolutely perfectly describes this coffee. Hang on one minute. Absolutely delightful. Like this a lot. Uh, my thanks to uh, viewer Mark Williams for sending along the Black Rifle Coffee Company sampler, which this was a part of, uh, one of the sampler bags. So thanks again, Mark. And I'm using my Bean to Bean coffee mug that came courtesy of viewer William and Meredith. Really like this one a lot. It's got a classic outdoor sidewalk cafe coffee kind of look, you know, coffee dining on a, you know, outside and a coffee house cafe that kind of thing it really is i love the two-tone color i love the handle and just the low profile it really is a favorite so thanks again to uh, william meredith and also to mark williams for the coffee and the mug this morning hey <laughs> we had snow last week no kidding the week before it was warm it was like 80 degrees everybody was outside uh cutting their grass you know mowing their lawn doing a little bit of yard work that sort of thing the sun was shining Everyone's in shirt sleeves, and I was saying, no, we're going to have snow. Probably around April 18th, we're going to have snow. And everyone wanted to know why. Well, my late brother Jay was born on April 18th, and ever since I was a kid, it always snowed uh, on or around his birthday. And sure enough, again, this year, uh, we got snow on the 17th of April and the 18th of April, which is his birthday, the 18th of April. As a matter of fact, we also had a freeze warning that went into the 19th of April. Yeah. So we had snow here. And I guess it was my uh, brother's way of saying, hey, Mark, get into a warmer state already. Why don't you move to Florida or Texas? <laughs> and speaking of which, my thanks to uh, viewer Beth Jones and her husband, Jim, for this wonderful t-shirt, a Bucky's t-shirt right here. Check that out, huh? Yeah, greetings from Bucky's, uh, Texas, the Lone Star State. Look at that. That's absolutely wonderful. I think this is my first Texas t-shirt ever, and I was not familiar with Bucky's. And uh, I did a little research online, and I found out that Bucky's is an American chain of country stores, gas stations, and Tesla superchargers created and owned by Arch Beaver Alpin III, headquartered in Lake Jackson, Texas. The chain was first founded in 1982 in Clute, Texas, and began expansion with its first travel center in Lulling, Texas in 2001. The company began expanding outside of Texas in 2018 with the opening of a location in Baldwin County, Alabama, and has since opened locations in Georgia, Florida, Kentucky, South Carolina, Tennessee, etc. I'll link to the Wikipedia article so you can read more about it. Uh, the chain is well known for the large size of its locations alongside its product offerings of fuel, snacks, particularly beef jerky and candy, ooh, <laughs> brisket, baked goods and commodities, tacos, fresh sandwiches, souvenirs, and travel items. The chain has also become well known for the cleanliness of its bathrooms, mascot, etc. So yeah, thanks very, very much to uh, Beth and Jim Jones for the Bucky's T-shirt, really do appreciate it. I've never, I never knew, I never heard of Bucky's. Now, my late friend, uh, Wes Alexander, who is a cartoonist and also a member of the National Cartoonist Society, was from Texas, and uh, I never heard him mention Bucky's, so I don't know. Of course, this was a number of years ago, but uh, he also moved around a little bit. He moved from Texas and then into Ohio and then back to Texas, that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, uh, and oh, by the way, hi to Aunt Edith and Aunt Martha down there in Texas. Uh, Wes's family. So uh, I guess through Wes and his family, I kind of feel like maybe I'm an honorary Texan just through my association of the Alexander family. So uh, yeah, Beth, thank you very, very much for sending along the, uh, the Bucky's Texas t-shirt. Uh, brought up a lot of nice memories of Wes. Uh, 
the uh, ribbon awards that we had over there in the San Antonio, uh, where I met his aunt Martha, and uh, just a you know a lot of lot of nice memories of Texas. But again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning, as we like to say on the show, a good hot coffee, a trusty mug. Let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen. Hey, one more. Absolutely fantastic. And if you're taking me on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate it. Now, Joe Rouse mentioned uh, in an email to me, Mark, you do ask on a regular basis what we drink when watching 3MB. Here's mine for today. The coffee is Mauds, M-A-U-D-S. I think that's, I pronounced that correctly. M-A-U-D apostrophe S, not Maud. I think it's Mauds. Gourmet coffee. And my pot of choice today is Maud's sister hazelnut. <laughs> My wife found these on Amazon. I'd never heard of them. There are multiple flavors in the pack, all of them whimsically named. Now, again, this is Maud's flavor coffee variety pack. Uh, it's a 40 count um, and uh, it's 100% Arabica coffee, California roasted, uh, K cup compatible. We'll have a link to that so you can check it out, folks. Uh, he continues here I don't drink coffee black, so I use Coffee Mate powdered creamer, in this case, the sugar-free chocolate cream to complement the hazelnut coffee. Think Nutella in a coffee cup, and I add a little stevia to sweeten it. My coffee mug is a vintage Union 76 travel mug that I picked up on eBay. I love to collect vintage gas station items, particularly items from Union Oil Company, as my grandfather ran a Union Oil dealership for a few years and so I always associate the brand with him. There aren't any Union 76 self-serve marts anymore. So in addition to being vintage, this mug is also something rather obscure. Have a great week, Joe Rouse. Joe, thanks very much for sharing that uh, with all the viewers out there. I remember Union 76. I don't know if we had any in my neighborhood when I was growing up with a, as a kid, but I do remember seeing the ads on television. And yeah, what a great coffee mug. Very, very vintage. Very, very cool. So again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We got a great show. Hey, let's get right to it like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. Well, this morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Chris Smith from across the pond all the way over there in England. And he writes, hi, Mark, enjoying your shaving channel as always. I always learn something new each time. Chris, thank you very much for the kind words, but I credit all the viewers out there, best viewers on YouTube, and they uh, share and offer some wonderful, wonderful information regarding the traditional wet shave. I say it very, very often, and I mean it without the viewers, this microphone would be silent. So thanks to all the viewers out there. Uh, Chris continues here. I have a small aftershave tip that may come in useful. I have many aftershaves, some I always use sparingly as I want to conserve them. I recently bought some small plastic spray bottles from the local chemist, the ones you can travel with. I unscrewed the pump action top along with the narrow plastic tube. This I insert into my aftershave bottle and I'm able to spray onto my face instead of pouring it out. It can easily be cleaned by flushing with water, ready for the next time. Kindest regards, Chris Smith out of England. Wow, that's an absolutely fantastic tip, Chris, really. And I'm assuming you're using the smaller travel size plastic bottles because that means that that plastic tube is the proper length for the size of an aftershave bottle. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful tip. Kind of like uh, what we've talked about in the past, using a spray pump on top of a bottle of witch hazel, that sort of thing. This is really, really great. And uh, he also provided a link to where you can get similar uh, plastic travel size bottles with the spray pumps. I will link that below uh, so you can get a look at that. So you can buy uh, you know, a collection of them and have uh, different spray pumps for different aftershaves. Absolutely fantastic tip, Chris. Thanks so much for passing along. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. 
And if you out there want an original George sketch, an original signed George sketch, just email me a shaving tip. Email that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it on the morning shaving tip here on the Monday Morning Mailbag Show, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Chris, thanks very much for a great shaving tip. Really do appreciate it. Well, this morning we have an extra shaving tip of sorts. It's really not a shaving tip, but I'm kind of putting in the shaving tip segment because it's a rather humorous anecdote. Uh, it comes from Mark Bagwell, and he wrote, Mark Cohen sent this photo to me. It's his first soap he has managed to use all the way to the bottom of the tub. You may want to include this in a Monday morning mailbag show as a uh, little funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How many of us out there have gone through a complete four ounce or five ounce tub of shave soap. I'd really be curious to know out there uh, if any of you out there have really gone through a complete uh, tub of uh, soap. Anyhow, uh, Mark also sent along uh, this little poem. Um, where has all the lather gone? My brush and mug do ask. Oh, where have you gone? Swirling, swirling down the drain. The lather that once caressed my face and filled my bathroom with such divine sense Oh, where have you gone? Down the drain. <laughs> he adds here, a great poet, I am not. No, I thought that was great. Absolutely great. And uh, yeah, we get such great pleasure and such great sense from our shave soaps. And uh, yeah, have you gone through a complete tub of shaving soap? I'm really curious to know. I know a lot of us who are really invested in the hobby... Uh, I think it takes quite a while for us to go through our shaving soaps because we have uh, quite a number of them. And uh, I have gone through Future Fiction uh, a couple of times. I've gone through Tabak a couple of times. And I'm trying to think of what else I've gone through. Um, those two come to mind. I know there are a few others because, you know, I really, <laughs> I really like using those a lot. Uh, Cad is getting kind of low. Club Guy is getting kind of low. Both of those from Phoenix Shaving. So let us know in the comments below uh, how many shave soap tubs you've gone through since you started your wet shaving journey. Mark, thanks very much for the very, very humorous photo from uh, Mark Cohen. And thanks for the uh, delightful poem. Really do appreciate it. Well, this morning we have an extra, extra shaving tip of sorts. Uh, but it kind of goes with the previous extra shaving tip of sorts. Uh, this comes from viewer Rodney Ripplinger. We haven't heard from Rodney in, in, in a little while. Uh, and he writes, uh, hi, Mark. Say, I tried that only a pinch of shaving soap method. Now, this was something that was passed along to us by viewer Robert Ross. He was showing how much lather he could get from just a little bit of shaving soap. And Rodney tried this. Now, let me start over again. He says, hi, Mark. Say, I tried that only a pinch of shaving soap method. I just so happened to have the same set of measuring spoons that were shown in the example picture, so I was eager to give it a try. I used one and a quarter teaspoons of water and a pinch of Ghost Town Barber Soap. I couldn't believe how much lather I got. If the Lazarus method works with that small amount of soap, I will get a shave tomorrow on approximately one half a pinch. Maybe we should get your viewer together with a guy who gets 400 shaves per blade. <laughs> I, rem I remember that if you were mentioning that, yes. If I adopt this method of lather making, I already have about 250 years worth of shaving soap on hand. <laughs> I'm going to try the same method with the shave cream later this week. Rodney. Yeah, that's very, very funny because, uh, again, I was asking, have you gone through some of your uh, shave soaps, the tubs? Have you gone through them? Uh, and a lot of us uh, are economizing by using just a little bit of shaving soap and getting all this great lather. So it's going to be years <laughs> before we burn through that shaving tub of soap. That's why just... Prior, I was, I was asking, have you gone through 
uh, any of your shaving soap tubs, or are you economizing? Uh, as Rodney uh, pointed out here, using just a little bit of soap and still getting a lot of lather, you know, you're going to have years and years and years, 250 years worth of uh, <laughs> worth of shaving soap. Again, uh, when you get involved in the hobby of the traditional wet shave, and it is a wonderful hobby, you tend to collect a lot of uh, shaving soaps because of uh, the great performance and the different artisans that, out there, that are out there and the wonderful scents and that sort of thing. And uh, they're so well made and they give such great performance. You don't need a lot. Now, again, I tend to overload either with a brush or in the lathering bowl when I do a review on camera. And yes, I am starting to learn how to economize a little more by doing a few swirls and then going right into my lather bowl and getting a lot of getting a lot of lather. So uh, yeah, 250 years worth of shaving soap. <laughs> That's very funny. Rodney, thanks very much for passing that along and confirming that Robert Ross's recipe uh, really does work. Thanks again, Rodney. Really do appreciate it. Well, this morning we have a Shave Den visit, or Shave Den visits. Actually, we have some pictures of vintage shave scuttles that viewers have sent in. Uh, and we'll kick things off uh, with something from viewer Ron Wright. And Ron writes, <laughs> Great 3MB, very generous gifts sent for the next milestone giveaway. I agree. Uh, absolutely wonderful, generous uh, contributions from viewers so far. We have another one we're going to share with you later on in the show. Uh, Ron continues here. I have a vintage scuttle that I've used a few times, but primarily it's used as a decoration for in one of our cafe bathrooms. You may recall that the cafe is on the first floor of a restored Victorian mansion. So the scuttle is a perfect fit and generates some good conversations every once in a while. I'll send you a picture of it. Have a great week. And he did. He followed up and he wrote, Hi, Mark. I've attached a couple of pictures of a vintage shave scuttle that I picked up a couple of years ago. I've used it a few times, but it's mostly a decorative piece conversation starter that I keep in one of our bathrooms here in the cafe. No markings on it anywhere. So not really sure of when it was made. The brush is a vintage Stag B1184 with nylon knot. Uh, the puck in it is a mostly used up puck of Williams. Cheers, Ron Wright. Uh, Backhouse Cafe, Williamsport, PA. Now, Ron and June are owners of Backhouse Cafe, a coffee shop right there in the historic section of Williamsport, PA. If you go up to their website, and I will link to it, they write here at Backhouse Cafe, our mission is to create a unique place where customers can socialize with each other in a comfortable and a relaxing environment while enjoying the best brewed Italian-style espresso-based drinks, coffee, tea, and pastries in town. Uh, and also on the website, they give a little bit of background on um, the Backhouse Cafe. Our story began in 2015 when Ron and June decided to open up their coffee shop. Using their combined skills, they began to work to make their dream a reality. As they traveled, they made sure to visit every coffee shop they could, gathering tips and ideas. Soon after, the search for the perfect location was next. Ron and June found a beautiful Victorian house located in the historic district of Williamsport. Hey, so if you're in Williamsport, PA, stop in at the Back House Cafe, have a cup of coffee and say hello to fellow wet shaver, Ron Wright. Ron, thanks again for sharing those pictures of that uh, scuttle. What a great idea, putting it into the uh, the rest areas of, of your coffee shop. I'm sure it really is a great conversation starter. Thanks again, Ron. Uh, Rodney Ripplinger sent along uh, this information regarding a uh, shaving scuttle he has. Hi, Mark. You wanted to see some pictures of old-time scuttles. As a coincidence, I used mine this morning prior to watching 3MB. I shaved using one of my Christie razors. This scuttle may have belonged to my grandfather on my mother's side. Wow, now that is really neat, that family connection. This is really a small scuttle. I was just able to force a Williams puck into it. It's in there until it's used up. For scale, I included a juice glass that is three and a half inches high in the picture. Also, my 20 millimeter badger brush barely fits into the water jacket. The top chamber has no holes going through to the water chamber. 
uh, a diminutive razor for a diminutive scuttle. Uh, thanks very much for the picture, Rodney. Yeah, I'm, I kind of got a sense of scale of how uh, small this scuttle is. Still, really neat that it belonged to your grandfather and you're still able to use it. That's really, really wonderful. Uh, viewer Roderick McLeod wrote, On to scuttles. I've had this one for a couple of years. It was broken when I acquired it, and I haven't gotten around to gluing the handle back on because I know that's going to be a one-shot deal, and I haven't decided how I'm going to go about doing it. Does anybody have recommendations on a good semi-spherical shaped soap that will fit the scuttle? Uh, keep up the good work. Looking forward to the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Regards, Roderick McLeod. Roderick, thanks very much for sharing that scuttle uh, with us. I hope you get it repaired. Folks, if you have any tips or tricks uh, to help uh, Roderick in repairing that handle, hey, post them below. I'm sure he would welcome uh, some uh, some ideas. And when you do get it fixed, send us some pictures of the, the repair and everything. Would really, really love to see that scuttle, and I hope it. I hope it works for you. That's absolutely fantastic. And yeah, folks, if you have uh, any recommendations for a good semi-spherical shaped soap that will fit the scuttle, please post that in the comments below. So, gentlemen, thanks very much for passing along the great photos of some vintage scuttles. Really do appreciate it. Well, this morning we have a pet visit, and it comes from George Haven. When I first saw the pictures and I read his email, I absolutely had to make sure this was in this week's Monday morning mailbag. Uh, this is this <laughs> this really is something. Okay, check this out. Uh, George writes, "Hi, Mark. Hope this finds you well. You asked for pet pictures, well." I've got a few that will bring some smiles to you and your viewers. My daughter, son-in-law, their dog, River, remember that name, and cat, Ella, just went to the Boston Marathon to see our son-in-law's twin brother run in the marathon. They built out an older plumbing truck to travel and live in. Here's the first picture of my daughter with River and Ella. <laughs> The next one has River probably saying, ha ha, I'm here and you're not. Well, they ended up in Cranston, Rhode Island just before the Boston Marathon and went out to dinner. Her aunt in Cranston forgot to put the screens on the upstairs windows and River ended up on top of the roof. <laughs> Since they were out to dinner and no one was home, a neighbor heard River barking and called the fire department. The firemen looked closely behind the tea in city of Cranston, had to calm River down with some treats, and waited for the bucket truck to arrive from another municipality because the bucket truck in Cranston was down for repairs. So I texted my daughter the following, quote, Wow, glad she had a no-slip grip. Falls on a river are beautiful, but not river on a fall, unquote. <laughs> That's great. Enjoy your day. Hope this brightened it up a bit. Blessings, George Haven. Wow, George. <laughs> That's great. I'm so glad that uh, River was rescued from the roof without any incident, without any injury or anything like that. That's wild. How did he get out of that window, out of that house, onto the roof? How did that happen? That is absolutely crazy. I hope uh, that uh, your daughter's aunt or uh, the son-in-law's aunt, uh, <laughs> whoever's aunt it is, I hope that uh, they were they put some screens up or someone bought uh, someone bought her some screens. That is really really wow. That's like out of a movie, out of a TV show. That really is. That's really very very funny. I'm just very very glad to hear that River is okay and everyone can look back on it and have a good laugh about it. Yeah, that is really, really something. So thanks very much for uh, sending that along and sending the pictures. Uh, <laughs> that really a delightful, funny story. I'm just glad it had a happy ending. And if you out there uh, have uh, some favorite pictures of your pet, hey, send them into the Monday Morning Mailbag and we'll share them with all the viewers out there. George, thanks very much for that delightful story, wonderful pictures, and I'm glad it all had a happy ending. Thanks again. Okay, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. 
Just head up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag and our other podcast, Second Cup, should come right up. Both podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts. Well, here's another reminder that Maggard Razors is hosting their sixth annual wet shaving meetup on June 3rd, 2023 at their store in Adrian, Michigan. Uh, now, tickets are $34 each, and they are limiting it to 220 attendees. They're going to have 24 vendors there. Uh, your $34 will get you admission, obviously, a $12 meal voucher for a participating restaurant in downtown Adrian, Michigan, free soft drinks and water for the day, entrance into drawings for door prizes, guaranteed 100 plus winners, some big ticket items, uh, guaranteed samples, freebies from most of the vendors in attendance, massive pay it forward table, uh, and again, they've got confirmed vendors here, Ariana and Evans, Barrister and Mann, Captain's Choice, Katie's Bubbles, Chiseled Face, The Grumatorium, uh, Carve Shaving Company, Noble Otter, Shannon's Soaps, Sterling Soap Company, uh, Timeless Razors, and Gary Man, to name a few. Uh, I'll link to the page where you can go up there and get all the information regarding it and also purchase a ticket. Notable guests, Mantic 59 of The Sharpologist, Michael Friedberg, Jinx the Cat, and HD Shave. So mark your calendar, June 3rd, 2023 in Adrian, Michigan. Maggard Razors is hosting their sixth annual wet shaving meetup. I'll have a link below. Well, we have a 10,000 subscriber giveaway update. Uh, as you know, we're going to be featuring some of the items that uh, viewers are donating for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. And we got a new item in from viewer Tyler Fike, F-I-K-E. Tyler, thank you very, very much. He very, very kindly sent in a brand new tub of Phoenix Shaving Cold Spices Artisan Shave Soap. Yeah, this has got a great, great Old Spice scent. I've reviewed the CK6 version, and that's what makes this so unique. It's not CK6. It's their original Coke and butter shave soap formula or the CK1 formula, which you can't get anymore. They've discontinued CK1. So that really makes it unique. This is the original Coke and butter formula. So yeah, uh, the lucky winner will get kind of an item that is very rare. This has become a rare item now because CK1 is no, no longer offered by Phoenix Shaving. I don't know, maybe they do have some stock left on various items. I'm not sure, don't quote me. But uh, their entire web store, website and store uh, lists everything as CK6. So this is really a rare item. Uh, the Coke and Butter uh, formula, uh, cold spices from Phoenix Shaving. Uh, my thanks very, very much to uh, viewer Tyler Fike for contributing this to the uh, price package or price packages, depending on uh, what else comes in. We'll be featuring something uh, that has been contributed by viewers from week to week for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. And uh, hopefully we'll get to that number sooner than later. So my thanks to Tyler Fike and also to Jimmy V Photography and Beth Jones for their very kind uh, do donations to the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. We have some other items coming in. And uh, again, we'll be featuring them from uh, week to week, show to show. So Tyler, thank you very, very much for sending in Phoenix Shaving Cold Spices, brand new. Here, I'll show you. I'll open it up. I'll open it up so you can see. It's a brand new, brand new shaving soap tub of uh, Cold Spices in their Kokum Butter formula. How about that? Tyler, thanks again very, very much. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on. 
That really is, really, really is a great cup of coffee. Thanks again to uh, Mark Williams for sending along Silencer Smooth from Black Rifle Coffee Company. Again, it's a light roast, really, really terrific, terrific cup of coffee. And thanks also to William Meredith for this really terrific, terrific bean-to-bean coffee mug. I really enjoy using this one. Fits in the hand very, very nicely. It's just got a great profile to it. Love the color scheme. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Anyhow, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. We've got some great comments in the refill segment this morning. Let's kick things off with something from Patrick Rabluski, who writes, As someone who has way too much shaving stuff, the idea of offering smaller sizes is a positive. The soap still comes in at about $5 an ounce, which is about going market rate. The splash of this set is currently sold out uh, at this time. Now, he is talking about the Denton Magic Colonial Oud, which we reviewed recently on the channel, uh, and it comes in a smaller two and a half ounce uh, jar and also a smaller uh, aftershave. Yeah, and this is perfect for travel. <laughs> you can throw this in your dop kit with absolutely no problem at all. We talked about how you... Uh, how we're economizing on using shave soap. And, uh, you know, when you think about it, if we're only using a pinch or a little more than a pinch, uh, this is there's plenty in here. This will last you a good long time. It's got a great, great scent. And the performance is really, really wonderful. Check out the review if you haven't already seen it. Uh, Denton Magic Colonial Oud. Really, really terrific. Thanks again to Mark Denton for uh, sending this along and allowing me to share this with all the viewers. Now, Mark also, Mark Denton also commented back to Patrick, and he said, actually, it's $4.40 an ounce. Hope you're doing well. We'll have more aftershave soon. Both soap and splash are on their way to the wet shaving store and the razor company. So if you can't find it at the Denton Magic website, check out uh, the, sh the, uh, the wet shaving store and the razor company. Uh, yeah, so uh, it really is a terrific, terrific scent. Grab some because I think it's going to go fast. It really is a fantastic, fantastic scent. Uh, Jay Hipple also said, being that small, you can fly with it. Yes, I think this two and a half ounce does fall within TSA guidelines. And again, uh, I would... I would absolutely throw this in my DOP kit and travel with it. Abs I'd have absolutely no problem with that at all. Uh, both great sizes, absolutely. Uh, Jackpot wrote, perfect size for throwing in your DOP kit. <laughs> absolutely fantastic. So I think everyone is uh, picking up on the unique size and its advantages. And again, nice price point, great size for home or travel use. So check it out, Denton Magic. Colonial Oud. Also, uh, give the review a look if you haven't already seen it. Uh, thanks again, Mark Denton. And thanks again to the viewers who uh, contributed to those refill comments. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Rick Fester wrote, Hi, Mark. Yet another great Monday morning mailbag. Thanks very much, Rick. I really do appreciate that. I have a suggestion for the conclusion of your show. Instead of freezing the screen to find the differences on the two cartoon panels as you suggest... I do the opposite. I challenge myself to find as many changes as I can before it times out. It helps keep my mind sharp as a feather blade. Thanks again for all you do for us. Hey, Rick, that's a really, really neat, unique approach. A great mental exercise trying to find, you know, the double take cartoon puzzle that I have at the end of the show. Find as many differences as you can before it times out. That is a great, great approach. I'll, uh, you know, thanks for passing that along. Folks, give that a try too. I, <laughs> thanks very much for that, Rick. That's great. Viewer Wally Pankowski wrote, Great informative video as always. I agree with your assessment of the T2 stainless. That's my daily driver. I just installed a Permasharp blade and it was fantastic. The next blade will be the Wizomet coming soon. The T2 does allow me to use very sharp blades and feel very comfortable in doing so. Uh, you gave great advice to try a less expensive slant razor before spending $400 for the console. I tried a slant for a couple of shaves, just not for me. Again, great video. Hey, Wally, thanks very, very much for that uh, comment. Again, you know, that's a your mileage may vary kind of razor, I guess. Uh, a slant. And uh, you know what? 
Um, come back to it. Try it again in three, four months. Uh, you know, your approach, your perception of it might uh, change a little bit, and you might find that it's a very, very agreeable razor. That's kind of what I recommend to uh, new wet shavers who have a new piece of shaving gear or a new soap or a new brush, whatever it is, and if they find that it doesn't work for them right away, right off the bat, you know, set it aside, wait a couple of weeks, maybe even a month, and then come back to it. And uh, there's something about waiting uh, and maybe your technique has improved over that time. Uh, maybe your expectations have been lowered a little bit. Maybe your first time around, your expectations were too high. You know, it could be psychological. I'm not, you know, just a hunch on my part. But um, yeah, I, that's kind of why I um, tell someone if you're gonna if you're gonna go for the console, you're thinking about buying a console, which is a fantastic razor. Try a slant first and see if a slant agrees with you. And uh, I love the slants that I have, the, the Parker Semi Slant and the X3. And let's not forget the Monster Slants from Phoenix Shaving. Those are great. Uh, speaking of traveling with a, a smaller jar or a smaller jar or tub of shave soap, Monster Slants are terrific for your dop kit. Just, you know, they're great. They also have a little bit of twist adjustability too. So that's something else to consider. So Wally, hey, thanks very much for that comment. I really do appreciate it. Bart Bartlett wrote, Monday morning mailbag time. Lots of useful info as always. As far as face washing goes, I mostly face lather and get a decent face wash when I'm hydrating my beard with the brush. I used to do a pre-shave wash, but stopped after I realized it made no difference to my shave performance. Using alum, witch hazel, and balm always keeps my skin irritation free and moisturized. Once again, a your mileage may vary thing. Every time I watch your new shaving gear segment, I remind myself to stay out of the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand what you're saying there, uh, Bart. And yeah, I guess it is a your mileage may vary thing. Um, and you know, your face, your rules. So, you know, uh, if, if this is your routine and it works for you, great. Uh, he goes on to say, but I have to report that I broke my rule when I watched a video showing that the Mula R41 safety razor head could be used with the Rockwell 6S handle. Warning, the R41 head does not work with the 6C handle because the threads are different. So I bought an R41 replacement head on Amazon for about half the price of buying the R41 safety razor. Now, I can say that I've shaved with the Beast using an Astra Green, a very light touch, and taking my time. While I had a close two-pass nick-free result, the R41 shave was not nearly as smooth and comfortable as my Rockwell 6S. I would definitely not use the R41 as a daily driver, but I do plan to try it again when I have three to four days of beard growth just to see if I can get a close two-pass shave. Thanks for another great Monday morning mailbag. Have a great week. Hey, uh, Bart, thanks for the update on the R41. Now, um, from your comment, I take it to mean that you were able to get the R41 razor head attached to the uh, 6S handle. Please comment below and clarify that. That's what I'm led to believe, but the 6C handle does not work. Uh, anyhow, the R41, yeah, this one came from uh, viewer John Kaczynski. He very, very kindly passed this along. I also have the R102, which is an R41 razor head on a different handle altogether. Uh, it's aggressive. For me, it's aggressive, and I agree with you, Bart. It's not a daily driver. But it is a razor that I can pull out with, say, as you mentioned, three to four days' worth of beard growth and get a really close, efficient shave. Uh, but, yeah, I got to really lighten up on the touch. I got to watch my technique with it. It's called the beast for a reason. Now, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the more current version of the R41, which is what I have here, uh, the design was changed in 2011 or so. Uh, Mula actually made it a bit milder from that original design. So if you have something prior to 2011 or thereabouts, I'm not entirely sure of the year, you'll have something that is even more aggressive than what's available through Amazon and the Mula store. Uh, I seem to recall that. So please comment below and let me know if I'm correct 
in 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 my recollection. I I, I seem to recall that being discussed. We may have discussed this on a Monday morning mailbag, a prior Monday morning mailbag, and I'm just not certain when that show was aired or if I mentioned it in a Monday morning mailbag or during a shaving review, or maybe I just read it in an online forum or on Facebook. I'm not entirely sure. But please comment below and let me know. But Bart, yeah, you're right. This is really, <laughs> this is really a, a razor that uh, for myself and others who may be fair-skinned and like a mild razor, boy, this thing is really the beast. Yeah, absolutely. It really does pack a punch. Uh, and I find that I really have to alter my uh, my technique with this and really lighten up. Uh, the different handle on the 102, which has the R41 head, uh, this handle has a different weight, kind of changes it up a little bit. Uh, the shave, that is. Kind of changes the shave approach a little bit, but both of them are still highly aggressive, highly efficient. So, yeah, take care if you uh, get one of them. Uh, either one of these. I don't know if the R R I don't know if the R102 is still available or not. I bought this through the Razor Company for like 20 bucks, something like that. It was on sale. Uh, yeah, so um, you might want to check either one of those out uh, if you're looking for an aggressive razor. Maybe your beard is a lot more demanding than mine, and you can tolerate. Uh, the uh, level of aggression with this razor. So uh, check it out, R41. Let me know in the comments below if you use the R41 as a daily driver or if it's once in a blue moon for about uh, several days worth of beard growth. Hey, Bart, thanks very much for the, uh, the input on the R41. Uh, Andrew Hill wrote, great show, very nice talk about your fellow cartoonist passing. This is in regards to uh, the great Al Jaffe, legendary cartoonist of Mad Magazine fame, uh, a fellow NCS member, uh, he passed away uh, recently at the age of 102. Um, Andrew writes uh, here, I knew who he was. Growing up in the 70s, Mad Magazine was required reading, laugh out loud. Great show also. Enjoyed the new gear section. As far as the talk about cleaning your face or not prior to shaving, I really feel a clean face is needed to start to shave. Even if you don't have a cube or one of the other pre-shave soaps out there. Just do a good scrubbing and clean your face. Your shave will thank you. Have a great week. Hey, that's a really good, uh, a good tip also. If you're traveling and you don't have the cube, but you have some bar soap, uh, yeah, wash your face that way and then start your shave. Uh, thanks very much for that, uh, that tip, Andrew. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Steve M. wrote, Hi, Mark. Great show. Thanks very much, Steve. I like Denton Magic's approach with small soap sizes. I'm not much for electric razors, but I do enjoy trimming with the Philips One Blade. Have a great week. Uh, yeah, hey, thanks for confirming uh, the great size from Denton Magic. Again, you know, another vote for the smaller size, the uh, you know travel size, also great for home. Uh, and again, we talk about a pinch of soap here, a little bit of soap there, and getting great performance of it. So yeah, there's a little, so even if it's even though it's two and a half ounces, a lot of soap there. So also, it's a great space saver if you're looking for smaller sizes for your shave den. This is a really a good starting point right here from Denton Magic. Now, as far as electric razors, he's referring to Steve is referring to the uh, the Pretech razor that uh, we recently reviewed. We also did a wet shave. On Saturday, hey, more on that later in wet, new wet shaving gear. Thanks very much for that, Steve. Really do appreciate it. Uh, viewer Chris F. wrote, nice 3MB mark. The fine bowl, uh, to me, is the best value in bowls for form and function. That is one of my two favorite bowls. The other is the SSHC and C. Now, I asked him what this was. I never got a response. Does anybody know what he, he's referring to uh, when he says SS? H, C, and C. I'm drawing a blank. I do apologize. I'm, I'm assuming stainless steel something. I am not sure. Uh, he goes on to say here, the Envoy, according to Matt Pisarsik, is an ambassador on setting three. Uh, to the viewer who asked, get a counsel for a milder, smoother feeling shave, but still very efficient. Autopilot safe razor. The ambassador for a bit grippier handle. Smooth, but more blade feel efficient. Hey, thanks for the, uh, the, the the quick comparison of the two razors. Really do appreciate it, Chris. Uh, the Envoy, I got an Envoy right here. Uh, yeah, 
if, uh, if the ambassador is the envoy, if the envoy is, is like the ambassador at setting number three, that really gives me a great idea of how the ambassador is gauged as far as aggression and adjustability. So yeah, ambassador's on my wish list. And I know where I'm going to be shaving with it at three and lower. Uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic looking razor. A lot of great reviews. I do have the council, and the council is wonderful. And I agree with your assessment regarding the um, the council. It is a rather, it is pretty much an autopilot kind of uh, razor. I uh, just be aware how you're loading that blade. That's the, I've, I've. If you saw one of my videos. I didn't. I, I really didn't pay attention, close attention to loading that razor blade because it's a slant, and it's kind of torquing that blade a little bit. Just make sure you're uh, you're uh, loading the blade properly. You'll know. You'll absolutely know if the blade is loaded improperly. You'll feel it, uh, and you'll know if it's loaded properly. You will absolutely have a beautifully smooth shave. But again, if you're looking at a, at the council, uh, really try a slant razor. Uh, and see how how you like the feeling of a slant razor. I like slant razors a lot, as I mentioned. They're absolutely fantastic. So, Chris, thanks for the great feedback on the Envoy, the Council, and the Ambassador. Really do appreciate it. And what is SSHCNC, the lathering bowl? I'm just uh, the shaving bowl. I'm just, I don't know. I'm so sorry. I know when someone gives me the answer in the comments below, I'm going to go, do <laughs> Roderick McLeod uh, said, um, regarding the tube pre-shave followed by the shave stick. Yeah, we had a question in a previous Monday morning mailbag. Uh, if if you're, the, the viewer want to know, if you're traveling with the tube 2.0 and a shave stick, how do you use them when you apply it to the face? Are you, are you applying the tube to the face? And then are you, can you apply the shave stick on top of that? I gave a couple of solutions that I thought might work. Roderick adds, first, I think James is probably overthinking this. It's mostly the stubble that catches whatever is being applied, uh, be it pre-shave or soap. Unless you get so much pre-shave on your face that the shave soap stick is just gliding across the top of it, you should be fine. Things that might help, lightly brush between pre-shave and soap applications. Don't go crazy with either one. Also, use the brush or your fingers to remove whatever liquefied cream residue is at the end of the stick and work that into your lather. Start with a nearly dry brush and keep dipping the bristle tips to work water into the lather. James, if you haven't gone on the trip yet, experiment with it first. I think you'll find everything you do works, but one is going to stand out for you as an easy, effective, no fuss, no muss, method. Hey, Roderick, great, great advice. Try it at home first before you travel. Absolutely. So thanks for that approach, Roderick. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Andrew Hill checked in one more time and uh, he wrote, that did a great job. He is referring to the review I did on the Pre-Tech electric razor. Uh, and he wrote, I used to have an electric many years ago. I love wet DE shaving. It's become a hobby, something I enjoy. However, I've thought of one of those mornings I just don't have the time for the whole wet shave, especially going in at 4 a.m. to work. You have a great week, great video as always. Now, I did a head shave with the Pre-Tech, and I wrote Andrew back, I commented back, and uh, here's what I prefer when it comes to doing a head shave. Um, now, the, the electric razor is great. It's a great option. Uh, if, if time is a consideration and you're pinched for time, that sort of thing. Uh, and it did do a nice job for giving me a head shave. But um, my preference for doing a head shave uh, is first and foremost, doing a head shave, a wet head shave, uh, in front of the mirror with the Supply SE or a mild DE razor. The next best option for me is doing it in the shower, you know, my morning shower. Again, using the Supply SE or a mild DE razor, or even a single blade or maybe a multi-bladed cartridge razor. That would be three blades or less. That seems to work also. The other option I like to use 
is either in front of the mirror or in the shower using the Omni Shaver. The Omni Shaver is very, very good. That will give me a quick head shave if time is a consideration. If you haven't seen the reviews I've done on the Omni Shaver, check that out. Just type in on YouTube, Mark Zerady Omni Shaver, and you'll see a, a, a few videos come up. One where I actually time the entire shave, which is kind of neat. I think it's less than five minutes, really. So that's really a, a neat kind of option as well. And of course, uh, the last option, uh, when time is a consideration, obviously, is an electric razor. And it does, un and this one, the Pre-Tech, did a really, really nice job. So that's kind of where my, preference, my preferences fall into place uh, when it comes to doing a head shave. So Andrew, thanks very, very much for that. I really do appreciate the comment. Uh, Dan S. wrote, you must have been reading my mind as I was going to ask you what your head routine was. <laughs> well, okay, I think he responded to what I just, what I had posted back to um, Andrew. Uh, I recently started shaving my head and soon realized it was going to be a daily chore to keep close. I thought I'd be able to get a few days out of a shave, but I don't. I've been using the leaf for my head shave, but purchased the Pitbull Skull Shaver Gold version for the days in between. It can be used dry, but I prefer to use a lather. After I'm done shaving my face, I use the remaining lather, just enough to coat the head. No need for an abundance of lather for my head. 60 to 90 seconds is all I need to get close enough and now only truly shave my head with the leaf two to three times per week. I use the pit bull the other days. Hey, Dan, if that works for you and the pit bull works for you, great. You know, absolutely. And if, if it helps you maintain the look of uh, your, your, your head and having it clean shaven and everything, that, that, that's fine. I'm an every other day kind of head shaver. I like to shave my head with the, with the Supply SE or a Mild DE every other day. And again, like you, if uh, time is a consideration, I'll use any of those other options I mentioned uh, and uh, the electric razor. This really does come in handy for those times when I got to get out the door. And we all understand that. But ideally, I absolutely love using the Supply SE or, or a mild GE razor. It's, it's part of the enjoyment. It's part of the ritual. And whenever I shave my head, it's usually in the evening. Uh, an evening head shave, so I have a little more time to relax. I can put on some music and, uh, you know, just take my time. And maybe if I have some leftover lather from the morning shave, I can use that, you know, to rebuild the lather, that sort of thing. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I like that aspect of it, but I totally understand if uh, the, the Pitbull Razor uh, works for you. That's great. You know, as we say here, your face, your rules. So absolutely. Thanks very much for the feedback. And I think it'll inspire some others who might be trying to refine their head shaving technique. So thanks very much for that. Paul Denali said, uh, I tried that ice cube post shave. Uh, it will be a new part of my routine. Now, uh, this was regarding a shave tip we had uh, where you use an ice cube in your post-shave routine. Let me read that again, let me start over. I tried that ice cube post-shave. It will be a new part of my routine. I never liked the shocking feeling of splashing cold water all over my face all at once, but moving the ice cube around feels really refreshing. Paul, thanks very much for mentioning this. So folks, there you go. Paul is endorsing the ice cube post-shave method and uh, he likes it a lot. And uh, yeah, he, uh, splashing water, cold water kind of shocks his face a little bit. The, uh, I guess you could say the ice cube kind of eases you into it, Paul. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, that's great. Well, thanks very much for that, Paul. Really do appreciate that. And thanks for confirming the ice cube post-shave routine and that it works for you. And that wraps up uh, this week's refill segment. Thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. Folks, we'll do it again next week. Okay, okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Okay, last week we introduced you to the Pre-Tech Electric Razor. The folks at Pre-Tech very, very kindly sent this along. 
uh, and allowed me to share it with all the viewers out there. We've done a couple of reviews. I say a couple of reviews because I'm, I'm issuing a correction here this week. Uh, in my original review, I said this was a dry only razor. It's not. It's wet and dry. Uh, you can use this wet. You can build a lather on your head and shave with this uh, as a wet razor. And you can also rinse the uh, razor head, uh, the foil head, and also the razor head here underwater. Uh, yeah, it is wet and dry. Now, I did post a review this past Saturday uh, doing a wet head shave with this, and it really did a wonderful, wonderful job. That little bit of lather that I used up on my head really improved the, the, the glide of this razor and really added to its uh, really wonderful performance. Now, uh, Dan S., in his previous comment in the refill, confirmed what I found uh, during my review with this electric razor when I did the wet head shave with it. Uh, and uh, in regards to lather, Dan wrote, just enough to coat the head, no need for an abundance of lather. I found the same to be true. Uh, you don't need to have a really thick carpet of lather as you would with a, a double edge razor or the Supply SE, that sort of thing. Just a nice light coating uh, from your shave brush or even a super slick like a Cremo, that sort of thing and work it in with your hand and uh, that will really uh, help give you a, a nice wet head shave uh, with this particular razor or a face shave. If you're one who wants to use an electric razor for a face shave, you can also, you know, lather your face. And again, you don't want to have an abundance of lather, as Dan pointed out. But it is wet and dry. My apologies to the folks at Pretech for uh, not picking up on that. Uh, I didn't scroll down far enough on their product page, so I do apologize. But uh, it is a wet and dry razor. And again, it's less than $20. So now, now that I know that it is both wet and dry, it's even a better value in my opinion because it gives you uh, both wet and dry. You have the option to use it uh, in either way. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really, really neat item. Again, it's a, it's a good size. It, uh, it's, U it's chargeable via USB port. Uh, so you can charge this. If you're traveling, you could just uh, plug this into your laptop and charge it that way. It charges up in about two hours. Again, let me just point out, when you initially get this, the instructions uh, recommend that you charge it for a good eight hours, and then you're good to go. Uh, and then thereafter, uh, when it depletes at about 5%, it'll start flashing. Plug it back in, and two hours will get you back to 100%. And it really is a very, very nice razor for the money. And it did a nice job, wet and dry. The uh, Pre-Tech uh, Bald Hair Shaver is what they call it. I'll have a link to it below. I'll have a link to it below. Again, once more, if uh, you'll be traveling and you need something and you can't take a DE razor, uh, you don't want to take a cartridge razor, something like that, this is a really good option. This is another, you know, this complies with TSA rules. So if you're getting away for the weekend, you're only taking a carry-on, this is another great option to have. And it's another tool in the toolkit. So it's great for travel. It's also good in a pinch uh, if you need to get that head shave or a face shave real, really quickly and you don't have the time uh, to do uh, the traditional wet shave. We all run into these situations sometimes. So for less than $20, a really, really good option. So uh, again, my apologies to the folks at Pre-Tech. I'm kind of issuing a correction. The Pre-Tech Bald Hair Shaver Wet and Dry Electric Razor. Well, some time ago, viewer Mark Bagwell very kindly sent along Nivea Men Sensitive Calm Liquid Shaving Cream. You can get this on Amazon in a three pack for less than $16. Each bottle is 6.8 fluid ounces or 200 milliliters. It, uh, it's enriched with hemp seed oil and vitamin E. Now, you know, let's get a picture of the back label here. All right, they have some information here on the back label, but here's what they write on their product page on the Amazon product page. Uh, fights shaving irritation. This liquid shaving cream for sensitive skin helps protect from shaving irritations for visibly healthy looking skin. Effortless razor glide, enriched with vitamin E and hemp seed oil and softens hair for an effortless razor glide and a precision shave. Vegan formula, 
Liquid sensitive skin shaving cream with a vegan formula enriched with plant derived ingredients. Recycled pump bottle. The convenient pump bottle is made of 97% recycled material, excluding the pump and label. Includes three 6.8 fluid ounce pump bottles of Nivea Men Sensitive Calm Liquid Shaving Cream. That's a great price point. Uh, I had a chance to use this before cameras rolled. I used my Paul Gruner lathering bowl and whipped up a really nice lather. Now you can rub it in with your hands or you can use a shaving brush. It made a really nice lather. Now is this artisan level shaving cream? Uh, no, not really, but it's very serviceable. It has a nice scent. It made a really nice lather, and I think it'll deliver a nice service, serviceable shave. Now, if you have sensitive skin, this is what this is indicated for. So uh, maybe some uh, fragrances and some other scents and that sort of thing don't agree with your skin. Maybe your skin, to, skin is sensitive to that. This appears to be designed for those kinds of uh, conditions, uh, sensitive skin conditions. At least that's my hunch. That's my guess. But... Um, I got a really nice shave with it. I got a really nice shave with it. So, uh, yeah, we'll be reviewing this soon and, uh, you know, hope to get a review done. And a uh, great price point, three bottles. Now, 6.8 fluid ounces, uh, since we talked a little bit about travel uh, and dop kit, this is probably a little too large to put in your dop kit and probably uh, is beyond the uh, TSA regulations. Uh, so, uh, but you can always maybe get uh, a smaller pump bottle and, pump some of this into that and take it along with you uh, so that it falls within the regulations. Perhaps you can try that because it's a, it's a, it's at a really nice price point. It gives nice performance. Uh, it has uh, some nice, well, from, from what they're saying here, some nice skin food ingredients, hemp seed oil, vitamin E. Uh, you can't beat that. And again, a three pack less than 16 bucks. So my thanks to Mark Bagwell for passing this along. I finally got a chance to use it before cameras rolled. I really enjoyed the shave with it. Uh, add the aftershave and the balm from Nivea into that, and you get an all Nivea shave. And uh, really, really a nice, nice shave with Nivea shaving products. Hope to get a review done on this very, very soon. Uh, it really is a nice option if you're looking for something for uh, sensitive skin uh, at a nice price point. Thanks again to Mark Bagwell for passing along Nivea Men Sensitive Calm Liquid Shaving Cream. I'll have a link below. Viewer Wally Pankowski checked in. Now, in a previous Monday morning mailbag, he told us of the Pereira Shaving Bowl. Well, he just received his, and he wrote, just got it in. Looks and feels great. Attached is a picture next to the Timeless Bowl. I doubt there will be any lather overflow problems. Hey, Wally, thanks very, very much. And thanks for the picture uh, showing me a size comparison to the Timeless Bowl. Really do appreciate that. So we look forward to your review of this and how it performs. So please uh, send in your comments so that we could talk about that in the next Monday morning mailbag. Folks, I will again link uh, to the page where you can get the Pereira Shave Bowl Wally talked about it last week, introduced us to it, and uh, he just received his. So I'm really looking forward to his review. Thanks again, Wally. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Joel Toronto wrote, Hi, Mark. Thank you for all your hard work putting the Monday morning mailbag together each week. As a fairly new wet shaver, I have learned a lot from your channel. Joel, thank you very much for the kind words. I really do appreciate it, but believe me, I have learned a lot from this audience in regards to the traditional wet shave. So again, my sincere thanks to all the viewers out there. Uh, he continues here, my wife bought these spice racks and said this would be good to keep my shave brushes on. So I loaded them up and she was right. There was an extra one, so I put some of my razors on it. If any of your subscribers are interested, below is the link. This is an absolutely wonderful, cost-effective, space-saving solution. Uh, if, you, if you're looking for something to set up your razors and your shave brushes, it's a uh, three-pack of uh, spice racks 
$23.88 on Amazon. Uh, Joel said it was about $20, but at the time I'm recording this video, it's $23.88. It's a three-pack of uh, the Lazy Susan White Gray Silicon Surface Spice Racks, and uh, a great way to uh, store and display your shave brushes and your safety razors and save some space at the same time. Really, really terrific cost-effective solution uh, for the shave den. So thanks very much for passing this along, Joel. And also thanks to Joel's wife, an absolutely great, great solution that is also at a really, really nice price point. Thanks again, Joel. Really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another new Wet Shaving Gear segment for this week. Thanks very much to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some of these questions and comments. Viewer Kevin Turner asked the following question, and it's pretty straightforward. Where do you get vintage razors? Great question, Kevin. Well, online, you can get vintage razors on eBay, on Etsy. If you join a wet shaving forum, uh, they often have buy, sell, trade areas where you can actually buy uh, razors from fellow wet shavers in those areas. You can trade uh, with them. You can even put out a query asking them uh, if anyone has a particular vintage razor for sale and what the price would be, that sort of thing. Uh, my advice is before you start posting in the buy, sell, trade areas, Join the forum, uh, get to know everyone there, kind of warm yourself up to them, uh, you know, become friendly and, uh, you know, learn a little bit about, uh, about their group and, uh, you know, kind of uh, get a discussion and conversation going on with some, uh, some of the uh, wet shavers there. And uh, you're more apt to get a good positive response from them when you go into the buy, sell, trade area to... Uh, find a particular vintage razor. But that's another really, really good resource. Also, Facebook. Facebook has a marketplace where you can search for vintage razors. Um, you can also look at some of the uh, Facebook wet shaving groups. And again, join some of those groups, get to know the members. And every, you know, from time to time, you might have a member saying, hey, I got this particular razor and you know, thinking about selling it or trading it, that sort of thing. Uh, after you become familiar with the group, uh, you can you know, put out a query and say, hey, I'm looking for uh, a Gillette Slim or a Gillette Fat Boy, something like that. You never know. Someone might have one for sale. Uh, but uh, online, Etsy, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, that sort of thing, and then some of the forums and some of the groups online, uh, the buy, sell, trade areas. Now, uh, now that uh, summer is right around the corner, there's going to be a lot of yard sales, garage sales, estate sales, um, that sort of thing. Those are also good resources to check out. Check out antique stores as well. Antique stores are a really, really good resource. Um, I have never really seen, I've only seen one safety razor. I got a gem safety razor at a secondhand store. Uh, so you might want to try secondhand stores and thrift stores, that sort of thing. Uh, I know Jim from Northfield finds a lot of really wonderful vintage razors at great prices on eBay, but he also uh, seems to find them walking into antique stores that uh, he might be driving through a particular part of town or uh, driving, uh, you know, in another area of the state, wherever, and walks into an antique store, and lo and behold, there's a particular razor that are really, really great price. So, you know, if you're if you're traveling this summer uh, and you're going through a little town or uh, another community and they have an antique store, hey, take five, 10 minutes, stop, walk in, see if they have anything there. So those are great resources as well. Online, again, I'll just recap, uh, eBay, Etsy, Facebook Marketplace, uh, buy, sell, and trade forums, buy, sell, and trade areas on wet shaving forums, uh, summertime, uh, yard sales, garage sales, uh, estate sales, antique stores, secondhand stores, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, and really, if you get to know a lot of uh, the wet shavers in the wet shaving community, you, you never know what they might have that 
uh, they're no longer interested in, in, in keeping. Maybe they want to kind of thin their collection and maybe would like to sell something and, uh, you know, make space for another razor acquisition that they want to bring in. Those kinds of things happen too. So uh, that's just a few suggestions out there. And uh, it's a great question and I'm glad we're talking about it. If anyone else out there has any other suggestions as to uh, good resources to find vintage safety razors, please comment below and let us know what those would be. I think I covered all the bases. I may have missed one or two resources, so please comment below if I missed anything. Kevin, great question. Thanks very much. Viewer Jason Miller wrote, Mark Zeredi, another great detailed educational breakdown of wet shaving products and tricks of the trade. Thanks very much, Jason. But again, all credit to the viewers out there. Absolutely. Uh, he continues here. When you mentioned Noxzema cream as the cheaper version of Parasso pre-shave cream, was it original or moisturizing cream? Also, for a cheaper version, I was thinking of using the box store version of Noxzema. Uh, as far as the version of Noxzema I'm using, now let me just back up a little bit. I have been using lately in some of my reviews a Parasso pre-shave cream. I'm washing my face with the Cube 2.0 and then I'm using Parasso pre-shave cream just to kind of change things up. I love using the cube as both a pre-shave pre wash and a pre-shave uh, base cream uh, kind of a coating, so to speak. Uh, it's wonderful, but to kind of change things up, I've been using Parasso lately, and it's very, very good. Now, a lot of viewers have pointed out that uh, Noxema is a very, very good substitute uh, for Parasso, and it's kind of a very affordable version of a pre-shave or, or, or a Parasso-like pre-shave. And I am using the classic clean original right here. This is what I'm using right here, and I get this... Uh, at uh, the local drugstore. I think I got this at Mark's or Walmart or something like that. And uh, yeah, so this is what I'm using and I have been using it this week and it's working very, very well. Now, it works better for me when I bowl lather because I can kind of... Uh, coat my face with Noxema, build my lather, and then paint it over that. So I've got, you know, two layers of protection. I got the, got the Noxema, and then I got the shaving cream, the lather on top of that. That works out great. In the past, I had been using Noxema as a pre-shave and then uh, doing a face lather. That works okay, too. That, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I think I, I got a better result uh, from bowl lathering and just kind of laying the lather on top of that coating of um, uh, Noxema. Just like I think I'm getting, a, I, I get a better result laying the lather on top of uh, when my face is coated with the uh, Cube 2.0 as a pre-shave. So yeah, I'm using the classic clean original Noxema. Now the other thing, <laughs> the other thing is nice. Uh, earlier we talked about the Dent and Magic uh, shave soap in this really, really great container. You can get Noxema in the same kind of travel container right here. And I've got this as well, and I'll throw this in my dop kit and use this as a pre-shave also. Just another option to have is what I'm saying. So, you know, so you can get the, uh, I happen to get, the, get this at my local Mark's uh, store. This is the classic clean original right here, Noxema. And of course, what does it say there on the, on the green label? It says, made with real eucalyptus extract. So that's kind of on there and it's kind of on there. Yeah. Now, if, uh, if you want to save a couple of bucks uh, at the big box stores, Walmart, Walmart has a Noxema like product called Equate. And uh, I think this is a dollar, maybe dollar and a half, maybe even two dollars cheaper than Noxema. Comes in a similar container and the ingredients are <laughs> very, very similar, if not identical. I think CVS has their own version, as do some other retailers out there. Uh, you can check some of the online forums and what the folks say about uh, Equate and some of the other um, Noxema-like uh, creams that are out there. I know that uh, I did read a comment someplace. Someone said that either the Equate or the CVS was actually closer to the original Noxema than this classic cream reformulation that they put out claiming that this is their 
original formula. Some folks feel that it's either the Equate or CVS version or some other version that is actually closer to the original Noxzema uh, original formula. So, uh, you know, your mileage may vary, I guess. But yeah, those are the options right there. Uh, Noxzema or uh, an alternative that uh, you can get from a Walmart or a CVS. Walmart's is Equate, which is a Noxzema like cream. And don't forget the uh, travel size of uh, Noxzema. Uh, it makes a really good pre-shave uh, substitute if you don't want to use Paraso all the time and burn through Paraso. And it is very, very cost effective. Very, very cost effective. So I think that's why a lot of wet shavers like to use it. And the other thing that I've been doing with the Noxzema is I wash my face with the Cube 2.0, and then if I know I'm gonna use uh, the Noxzema as my pre-shave, I'll put a little bit, not a lot, but I'll put a little bit on my face, and then I'll put the hot towel uh, on top of that for about a minute, minute and a half. Wow, <laughs> that's great. That worked out. I think I've done that once or twice already. That's great. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do that down the road also. I'll also do that just with the Cube too. Um, you know, I've kind of modified my, um, my routine. Some viewers out there said, Mark, you know, wash your face with the cube, then do the hot towel. Don't do the hot towel first and then wash your face with the cube. Wash your face with the cube, then do the hot towel. And that worked great because there was a little bit of that soap from the cube left on the face. And, uh, you know, it's got the, the, it's got the menthol quality to it. And boy, that the hot towel really kind of brought that out. So I decided you know, wash my face with the cube, then apply a little bit of the Noxzema, then put the hot towel on. That worked great. That really did. That's why I love the traditional wet shave so much. You can kind of mix and match and change things around and really, really make it exciting and make it different. It's the best way to shave. I've said it before and I'll say it again. And viewers to this channel, <laughs> they know this by rote already. If you're not doing the traditional wet shave, what are you waiting for? You will find a razor, a brush, a razor blade, an aftershave, a shaving soap, a shaving cream to fit your face type, your beard type, and your wallet. It really is the best way to shave. And again, you can change your routine around and make it really, really interesting so it doesn't become a, mon a mundane you know, in a rut kind of thing. It becomes exciting, it becomes refreshing, it becomes something new and different. Yeah, absolutely great. So Jason, uh, thanks very much for the question. Uh, I use Classic Clean Original Noxzema and uh, also these alternatives here, the Equate, the Equate right here from the big box store and there's some others out there. And uh, check out the Noxzema travel size as well. Thanks again for the uh, question, Jason. Really do appreciate it. Okay, got the following question from viewer Patrick Moscow. Now that's spelled M-O-S-K-A-U. I think that's how it's pronounced. Patrick, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. Patrick Moscow. Anyhow, he wrote, Hey Mark, I'm a new wet shaver and was looking to upgrade from the Razor Rock Lupo. I watched your video on the Rex Envoy and Razor Rock Game Changer. Can you help point me in the right direction? Uh, Patrick, be more than happy to help you out. Both are great, great razors. Both are stainless steel razors. Both are precisely machined. Uh, there are a couple of differences that I want to point out to you. Uh, let's, let's look at the uh, Rex Supply Envoy razor. Stainless steel, uh, a mild yet efficient shave, as was mentioned earlier in the show. Uh, if you were comparing this to the Ambassador adjustable razor from Rex Supply, uh, this uh, Envoy is probably at a level three aggression on an Ambassador. Now, an Ambassador adjusts from one to six, if I recall correctly. So level three is right there in the middle, kind of neutral. Uh, and that's what the, the uh, Envoy would be rated at. A nice, neutral, mild, yet efficient shave. This is a daily driver for me. The one thing uh, I love about this uh, particular razor is that the razor head and the handle are paired together forever, so to speak, because of the way it's machined. It is so precisely machined. Check out that fit and finish right there where the handle meets the base plate. Check that out. That's because the base plate has this beautiful, beautiful countersink 
in there. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can show that to you. It has that beautiful countersink in there. And the handle has that little bit of a diameter turned down on the neck. So it just fits together like hand and glove. It is just absolutely beautifully, beautifully machined. Now, the, uh, the base plate has these slots in here that line up with tabs that are in the, uh, the cap. So all you do is drop the razor blade in there and the uh, tabs will poke through the, uh, the blade and then you just uh, drop your base plate on there like that. Everything aligns very, very nicely and you just attach your handle and uh, alignment and balance of the blade are absolutely perfect and spot on. End tabs of the blade are enclosed in the razor head. 316 stainless steel, a lifetime razor, absolutely beautiful. Love the knurling on the handle. It is wonderfully grippy, uh, absolutely fantastic. I love the size of the handle. Uh, you, uh, uh, Rex Supply offers a longer handle uh, for this razor. So if you want something that's longer and adds a little more weight to the razor, they do offer a longer handle. I do have the longer handle, but I have found that I really, really prefer the standard size handle on the Envoy. Every once in a while, I'll pull out the long handle and I'll use it, but I really do prefer the standard sized uh, handle on the Envoy. It's absolutely a wonderful, wonderful, well-made, precisely machined razor. No doubt about it. And again, it's a lifetime razor. So I really enjoy using it a lot. Delivers, again, a mild, efficient shave. I can use this as a daily driver. It's absolutely wonderful. So I like it a lot. So that's kind of lay of the land on the Envoy. So um, if you're thinking about maybe uh, getting it and uh, attaching another handle to the razor head, that's, not gonna, that's really not going to work. Maybe some wet shavers have, have done that and found something. Nah, I would, I would not advise doing that at all. This handle is designed for this razor head, and really, that's... Such a wonderful fit and finish. Yeah, that, if you want a second handle for it, get the longer handle. It's uh, an absolutely wonderful, wonderful razor. And I know, I only mention that because I know a lot of wet shavers out there like to mix and match razor heads and handles. With the Envoy, uh, the razor, the, the, the cap, the base plate, and the handle are going to go together forever. <laughs> and I like that a lot. I'm, I don't like to mix and match my, uh, my razor heads and handles that much. Now, the Game Changer. I believe the uh, Game Changer Razorhead uh, was uh, sent to the channel very kindly by Greg from Virginia. Thank you again, Greg. Really do appreciate it. Uh, as you can see, the Game Changer has a little bit of a slimmer profile. A little bit of a slimmer profile. Uh, the uh, razor blade end tabs are enclosed in the razor head. Uh, it is stainless steel, uh, and you can buy it with a, a variety of different handles from the, uh, the Razor Rock uh, website. Now, I have the, I guess what you would call their standard handle here. This is a stainless steel handle that came with the Razor Rock Mission Razor. So when I received the uh, razor head from Greg, uh, I needed a handle, so I went right to my Mission Razor, knowing that it was a stainless steel handle. The Mission Razor head is zinc alloy, so hey, you know what? That was set aside in favor of this Game Changer a razor head and it just paired together so wonderfully well. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, the configuration of the razor head is a little different. Let me get rid of that uh, O-ring there. The uh, configuration of the razor head is a little different in that uh, the base plate has these posts there and the uh, cap has these uh, indentations where those posts match up. So loading the blade is a little different. You can lay the blade on the base plate and then set the cap on top and line things up that way. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit backward. Ordinarily, the, the tabs or the posts would be in the cap and then uh, the, 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 the holes or the grooves would be in the base plate. This way, it's the other way around. You have a shorter post here in the base plate and a indentation or a slight hole in the cap, uh, and that's how things line up. Now, again, you can use different handles if you want to and experiment and mix and match, that sort of thing. Uh, I believe it was Al Spencer who uh, commented to me that he has 
a, I think it's called the Bulldog Handle. I think, I can't remember, uh, Al, forgive me, but it looks very, very similar. Whatever it's called looks very, very similar to the bomb tip handle that came with my Ascension stainless steel razor. Now, the Ascension stainless steel razor came with this solid handle, but Phoenix Shaving also sells a stainless steel handle with removable with removable bomb tips. That's what I bought and that's what I'm currently using on my stainless steel Ascension razor because I like the removable bomb tips. This is solid. So you know what? If I want to, I can go ahead because everything is standard thread. I can go ahead and attach that to the game changer and now I've got a different kind of handle. Again, you go up to the Razor Rock site and you can select uh, a different kind of handle uh, for your uh, uh, Razor Rock a game changer a razor head. So you can kind of mix and match things if you want to. Uh, also, the Razor Rock comes in two versions. It comes in an aggressive version and it comes in a mild version. I have the mild version right here. Uh, this is a daily driver for me. It's a beautiful shave. It's mild. It's efficient. It's in the same ballpark with the Envoy. And uh, they're both great, great razors. But those are some of the differences in the features between the two of them. Uh, you know, both precisely machined, both wonderful, wonderfully made, well thought out, stainless steel, lifetime razors. Uh, but uh, those are some of the highlights. And uh, if you purchase either one, you're going to get a great lifetime razor. Absolutely no doubt about it. The Rex Supply Envoy, I think, is going to be a little more expensive than the Game Changer. And again, with the Game Changer, uh, you also have the option just to buy the razor head, whether you buy the, aggression ver the aggressive version or the mild version. Uh, you can just buy the razor head, and if you happen to have a stainless steel handle, like I did, well, then you can just, you know, then you're all set to go. Then you just get the razor head, and you can save a little bit, a little bit of money that way. Or you can just select one of the many razor handles, stainless steel razor razor handles that Razor Rock offers, and then uh, you know buy the whole uh, the whole razor from them. So you do have that option, uh, aggressive or mild, uh, razor head only, or razor head with uh, whatever handle you might want to select. So those are kind of the ins and outs of it. Both great razors. I hope those highlights uh, help you to make a decision. Please let us know what, uh, which razor you selected and how it performs for you. Really, really interested in knowing that, uh, Patrick. Thanks again for the question. Again, I hope this helps in some way. Thanks again, Patrick. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share. Please subscribe. Please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below. Let me know. Check out all the wonderful artisan soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soaps. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review on this channel, organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video. Or, like Rick Festa, try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.